I think I think we're live. No. No, we're not live, but we are recording. <laughs> Soon, soon we will be able to go live again. Yeah, this is really exciting, folks. So I'm actually, uh, we we are essentially buying our own satellite dish to throw into outer space, essentially on the water tower in Pretty Prairie. And they're going to run a fiber optic cable directly into that. And then that's going to beam from there to our house. And they said we may be able to get speeds upward of 300 megabits per second upload and download speed which is huge for us because right now our speeds are are 20 download and three upload which is why we have problems with live stream and it's not dedicated so sometimes our internet connection is battling it out with everyone else's internet connection mm -hmm. and that's Those when it goes down times uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. so we're really uh -huh. excited once that gets hooked up which should be this month we're gonna be able to do more of these live Yawas where we really enjoy interacting with people in the moment, doing some of those fun contests and giveaways and trivias as we're doing the episode. So, here soon. we are in uh, to ready to start this week's Yawa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we do wanna do a, a quick little chit chat to our sponsors. This is kind of an exciting new thing for us folks. Uh, we're growing, you're growing, everybody's growing together. And uh, we've got a couple different people to talk about. You've probably all seen, we've been uh, long fans and have a great relationship with DT Systems. They have great products. Any of your dog e-collar related stuff, uh, you know, they're our go-to. We also, this year, um, are working, not just this year, but we've been working with them for the last year or two. You remind me, babe, um, with Kent Cartridge. Mm -hmm. It's been a couple years. Two well, years. Since this Spriggy. will be the third year. Yeah, since Spriggy. Um, yep. And they are also sponsoring our YouTube channel, which is awesome. And uh, last but not least, uh, Ukanuba Sporting Dog. Uh, we've been feeding Ukanuba Dog Food for almost two and a half years now. Yeah, it'll be actually, yeah, two, almost two three years. years in May. Almost three years in May. So, long time. Um, we are big advocates for trying things before we recommend them to y'all, as well as want the best for our dogs. And I believe that's where we're at now. Yeah, so those are some new and exciting things that we like to announce. And if you guys are here following along with our Yawa, you also typically, at least some of you, want to know what Ethan will be drinking with us today. This one is a, a, fan, a fun one. Some people have probably heard of Angel's Envy. It's a more popularly known bourbon but a very nice bourbon. And this was a gift from Brad when he came and picked up his dog recently, an extremely nice gift. So I wanna say thank you for that and I'll let you know how good it is. Yeah, the bottle looks really cool anyhow. Oh, popped nice. Popped nice, it smells good. And, and I am partaking in some constant comment tea because A, I'm pregnant and B, it's freaking cold out today. And just yeah, looking cold. outside makes me cold. So I'm like mm. hugging my <laughs> cup here, trying to warm myself I'll up. Just set you over here to look beautiful right there. Yeah, like I said, it's a cool oh. bottle. Okay. Well, while you sip and let that breathe and do all the bourbony things with it. <sighs> it's tasty. Good, good, good God, y'all. Well, I'm glad you approve. What, where has this been my whole life? <laughs> Well, in a barrel in a different country. Since you're enjoying that. Well, if it's from a different country, though, would it technically still be bourbon? I think I've no, learned that not. much, yeah, 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 at no. least from in a different to state. You talking state, that's bourbon. what I meant. Good catch. Good catch, yeah. mama. Hey, see, I've been paying attention and learning bourbon things. So now it's time for us to help you guys learn about some dog things. All right, what do we got for questions? This question is from Sims PC. Which, if you guys don't know where we're getting our Yawa questions, we get them from our YouTube channel. It's really easy for us to find those if you type Yawa question at the beginning of your question. Mm -hmm. So that's what Sims did. He said Yawa question. 
How do I get my five month old crazy German wire hair pointer to stop jumping up at the kitchen sides and taking food? Also, how do I stop her from running off with shoes and slippers? We have tried everything. We really need your help. Mm. So Sims, I don't think you're alone in the fact that your puppy kind of likes to try and counter surf a little bit and oh, find shoes and anything else that they can grab a hold of and run off with baby toys, kids, toys, anything. It's a, uh, it's a learned behavior based off of our uh, human nature, essentially. Right. I mean, puppy grabs something they're not supposed to have. You say, Hey, give me that. No puppy and discipline them some way or another, or you just take it away and redirect, or you take it away and take it away. All of those things equate to essentially the same thing for the dog, which is they lost whatever they were excited about at that minute, and that was directly related to the fact that you are the one that took it from them. So why on earth would I want to come near you with said thing that I know that I'm probably not supposed to have? Yeah, and there's a couple other things that go into play with counter surfing as well as, you know, grabbing things and running off with them. Um, Opportunity. Dogs are very opportunistic. Mm -hmm. So if they see a moment where you're distracted or they're not necessarily being supervised, they will probably try and take advantage of that to snag themselves a reward from the counter. Uh, And then it becomes this rewarded behavior that anytime you're rewarding and reinforcing that behavior that way, it's going to become stronger and stronger. So they're going to think, well, every time I have jumped up on the counter, I've gotten a treat or a piece of food or something that I wanted. So I'm going to keep doing that and rewarding myself. The other side of things is sometimes dogs grab an item and learn that they get attention for it by playing chase or mom and dad trying to get it from me. And though they know, don't know it's necessarily a bad thing or not the best attention that they want, they still want the attention. They want the game. Exactly. And it, it becomes a fun game for them. So we have to a try and eliminate those opportunities where they can exhibit those behaviors and your puppy's five months old. So they're ready for this type of training. Little, little puppies, A, you know, 12 weeks old, 16 weeks old, are barely able to get up onto the counters yet. So um, when they're young like that, we haven't really started this kind of training. But as they get older and have more maturity for this type of training and are bigger and causing more problems, that's when we really like to start to incorporate place training. Yeah. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it, uh, a big thing that we talk about all the time is conditioning, right? So nothing gets fixed overnight. And if we can just condition a behavior that prevents, like Kat was saying, you know, it eliminates the opportunity, um, that behavior itself is going to go away or the other is going to strengthen, which is not doing what they're getting in trouble for, you're not wanting them to do. So the place training becomes a really big thing for us. And we put a bunch of emphasis on it with dogs in that zone. It's a very common time frame where you go, puppies are doing great. They're learning all these things. Then they start to flow into this little bit more independent. They get a little bigger. They can get into more things. They can get away from you faster because they're bigger or faster or whatever it is. So they start to, to play those games and learn how to win those games. And we essentially just need to eliminate the opportunity to play the games in as many situations as possible. Yeah. And so we talk about place training. And what I wanted to say is now we're ready at that five month mark a lot of times to start incorporating collar conditioning to stay on a dog bed. So they can stay on the dog bed for short amounts of times, get chew bones and things like that to really start developing that good behavior that we're looking for when they're younger than that. But then when we need to start being able to hold them accountable and extending our expectations for them to stay on their dog bed from longer durations to through bigger distractions, that's when that collar conditioning really can play a really big role. And that eliminates the opportunity because they're not off their dog bed to get on the counters. So that behavior can become eliminated, like Ethan was saying, as well as if they're on their dog bed, playing with their toy or chewing on their bone, they're not running around grabbing shoes and slippers and things that they uh, shouldn't be. 
The other side of it with the grabbing and running with things, I think, is you can you can start in an ideal world, right? You would have started this with a little itty bitty puppy and you would have worked through every situation perfectly and developed this dog that doesn't know how to do what you're dealing with now, um, which is completely unrealistic, okay? Yeah, let's be real. That doesn't even happen for us. uh, No. So, but... If you can start these things, if you guys are watching that have young puppies that you're you're trying to work through just a little bit different, um, what I would recommend doing is calling them over to you, good dog, kind of praising them for coming to you, taking and do the old bait and switch type of deal. Here you go. Here's something. But it's got to be, and I think this is the mistake that people make with redirecting focus to new items is it has to be more exciting or more powerful or more rewarding to the dog than what you just took from them or it doesn't matter like I, I i give them their bones well they don't give a darn about their bones because they have access to them 24 7 but what they don't necessarily maybe have access to is some kind of special chew bone or something now the gray area or the fine line with this type of training comes into play when the dog actually starts essentially learning that grabbing these things is going to earn me said reward if they can put those things together or they just don't learn that they need to eventually leave the dang shoes alone or leave the dang whatever it is alone and there will come a time where some level of discipline needs to fall into that to finish the process of hey leave the shoes alone so Uh, But in the beginning, I think that's the biggest thing that people make a mistake about. So if you're trying this or you're kind of struggling with the beginning stages, make sure your switch or your redirect is drastically more powerful. The dog should take what you are redirecting with and be like, ooh, and go run over and lay down to chew on it or to play with it. If they're not excited about it, it's not the right thing. Exactly. So, um, and like Ethan mentioned, eventually you may have to move towards some discipline, but those aren't our go-to methods. Our go-to methods are redirecting them, developing good behaviors of them, staying on a dog bed in those distracting and exciting situations, and then ultimately conditioning those behaviors through collar conditioning. Uh, I wanted to mention, we do have a video that talks about, you know, how to have a well-behaved dog, the power of place training on our YouTube channel already. It's a really good if, one. If you guys don't know this, because a lot of people say it's hard to, you know, it's like hitting your channels, like drinking through the the fire hose or whatever. I mean, there's too much and we miss stuff. You can go onto YouTube, search Standing Stone Kennels, and then a specific topic. We've thrown tags in there and we have information in the descriptions that should helpfully pull that as well as the titles. It's like a search engine. Yeah, YouTube is, uh, is exactly, essentially a search engine um, where all of the results come back in the form of video. So... Uh, same thing can happen there, standing stone kennels and then search place training or yeah, exactly. I searched that. That's what I did is I did standing stone kennels, place training. And the third video was the one that I was looking for specifically on how to get my dog to behave in the house. And it is this one. The thumbnail is a picture of Vexer and a dog bed. That's thunder. They look a lot alike. Oh my goodness. Yeah. There's a picture of thunder and a dog bed and it equals well behaved. Huzzah. So uh, check that video out. The last thing I want to throw out there that's an interesting thing is we talk about the best way to prevent these type of behaviors is um, or to fix these behaviors is to prevent the dogs from learning. And one of the most interesting things that I have to throw out there about this is we have over the years bought a few trained dogs or, or finished dogs or started dogs as potentials to add to the breeding program or you're like, Ooh, this is a nice dog and it may work to our goals. Most of the time that fails. But the interesting part of that is this three-year-old or four-year-old or five-year-old dog that's lived in a, uh, maybe a kennel type of environment or something to that effect. They come into the house and we start that house training. We treat them like puppies, but they don't know how to counter surf. They don't know how to beg for food. They don't know how to get into mischief or steal shoes or do all of these things because they've never had the opportunity to learn them, which is really what drives that um, training philosophy, if you will, of preventing them from learning the things is the best way to prevent these things from being, you know, the chewing or the stealing things and running away or counter all those things from becoming big problems. So I think that was a really good question. And I am excited to answer the next one. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? 
So I'm just going to get on my soapbox for just half a second before I'm just going to, before you soapbox, I'm just going to say this bourbon, Brad. Good. Sometimes I just need a glass of wine, something to relax when I'm reading through some of these comments on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's ugly, folks. Oh, man. You definitely Not have all to have of y'all. some. No. Folks that are listening right now, we love you. Um, but there are some other people out there that it just, <sighs> yeah. you know, I mean, if we could real quick without uh, any kind of copyright infringement, I would just pop in Bambi. Uh, with the bunny, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Yeah, thumper. But uh, you definitely have to, or we have to have a thick skin when we're reading through some of the comments, looking for these Yawa questions and trying to get to answer some of the other little questions that we see on our YouTube channel. Um, we really can't get to every single comment. Um, it is impossible, not because we don't want to, but because we have so many other responsibilities, uh, from emails and Facebook and dog training and puppies and all the things that we do. We wear a lot of hats and getting to every single YouTube comment just can't happen anymore, which is awesome that we're growing so much and we have so many people interacting. Uh, but unfortunately we can't answer them all. So sometimes you read a comment here and there that just gets under your skin a little bit. And so I wanted to actually read this question because it was a good question and I was planning on answering it. And then I popped in and said, saw that there were a couple of replies and sometimes those replies are really cool. Sometimes the replies, I look at them and I'm like, oh, one of our other fans that has obviously watched tons of our videos chimed in with an answer or, hey, you should check out this video. They talked about it here. We have fans that jump, jump in and offer that opinion and advice, and it's cool when people are supporting each other. And then sometimes you pop in and you read the comments or the replies, and you're like, well, I didn't really like that reply. So we're going to get there. Question from Lola the Silver Labrador. Hi, Lola. Yawa question. <clears throat> Help. How do I get my springy Labrador to stop jumping? She jumps on my head and back when bending over to put my shoes or boots on to go outside my patio door and opens doors. Oh I have tried everything. We need a little help. Thank you from Kara and Lola. And then she actually replied and said, P.S. She's eight months old and I have been trying to break this since she was seven weeks old. Mm. So I appreciate that added little bit of information because I was going to ask how old is she? But then somebody had to just jump in and be all smart. Jim and Vicki Heiselman. Lola the Silver Labrador. The only way they will answer you is if you join one of their money-making patron sessions. Which, if you guys are following along with Yawa, is absolutely not true. We are always answering these questions on Yawa. We just have asked. limitations. Yeah, we have limitations mm -hmm. or we need more information or we need to be able to see what's going on. And we do appreciate our patrons for supporting our content, the patrons that join to ask questions so that we can help them at different levels. And like we mentioned at the beginning, we are going to be upgrading our internet so that we can do more with you guys to upload videos faster because that's one thing that's really restricting us right now, as well as being able to do some live videos again, is our internet sucks. Well, better internet costs a lot more money, especially out here in the middle of nowhere, rural America. So you patrons are helping us be able to do that so that we can get out this content to everyone that's appreciating it. And even those that aren't appreciating it. I'm now stepping off my soap box, but we're going to answer gonna your question. Take that soap box <laughs> and throw it in the bonfire. <laughs> that's right. So Lola, to answer your question, there's a couple things that um, we have as go-to suggestions. Again, not to harp on it, but sometimes we need a little more information. And it says you've been working on this since she was seven weeks old and she's eight months old now. So knowing and finding out what you've tried, what has potentially helped a little bit, what hasn't helped at all, would be valuable information for us to have. Absolutely. As well as, uh, you know, having a realistic understanding to the situation, right? This has been going on a while. It didn't condition itself overnight, so it's not going to fix itself overnight. But we have some ideas, and a big one for me is 
Uh, if you're all right with me starting with this, do you have something yeah. you want to say? Well, Go you can it. say what you're going to say, and then I'll say what I'm going to say, and maybe it'll be the same. But Probably I think it's not. different. Okay, so um, you know, a big thing is that dogs strive off of structure and obedience. And in this specific situation, it seems like a little bit would go a long way with what you're struggling with. Um, the simple behavior, and I know I'm not trying to downplay this, so please don't misunderstand me as trying to say, ah, oh, this is just easy. But the simple behavior of sit, right? All dogs know how to do that. It's uh, most dogs know how to do that pretty or quickly. Or can be taught. Pretty quickly. I mean, it's one of the, I, I would, I would, I would beg to throw out a survey. If y'all are, you know, in the on survey the, mood on the, the tube here watching this, throw in the comments below the first thing that you taught your dog, the very first thing that you taught your dog, throw it in there. I bet that, uh, my, my guesstimate is sit falls into that category on uh, an above average number, if not the most popular Probably the thing. top percentage. Yeah, top percentage anyhow. So um, teaching sit, utilizing sit, and stay, right? So when you go to put on your shoes, you're going to anticipate the fact that you're going to get jumped on, and you're going to say, sit, stay there. Good dog. You start to do your shoes. Dog moves. Now nah, you stop a second. And in these beginning stages, it's going to take a little while, right? didn't uh, build the great wall overnight. So we're going to tear it down in a weekend, but we, we can utilize that behavior of sit and stay. And that can happen at the door. That can happen when you're putting your shoes on, like you were mentioning there, or any type of situation where the jumping behavior is becoming a problem. Ah, quit that, sit down, stay there. Once you get a few seconds of that, then reward that. Show that good behavior. That's how you're going to get attention. This is what we want. Um, now, as far as the door opening side of things go, uh, we're going to have to talk about that next. So you actually hit on what I was going to say a little bit, and I wanted to expand cool. on it a little bit more. So anticipating your dog's behavior so that you can interrupt that behavior, redirect it, and work on that behavior to improve it is important because you know it's going to happen. So don't let it start happening. Um, mm -hmm. We want to try and redirect and interrupt it before it even begins. So it's not, oh, dog jumps on me. Then I make the correction. Then I try and ask for a better behavior. Let's ask for the better behavior before we even initiate that naughty sequence. And like Ethan was saying, working on a sit, working on a stay, make those opportunities to go outside into training sessions and even mm -hmm. setting those situations up into a training se session. So not when you're in a rush to get out the door to go run errands or pick up your kids from daycare or something like that. Say, well, I have time now. I don't need to go outside, but my puppy doesn't know that. So I'm going to actually set up a training situation where I'm thinking about going outside and acting like I'm going outside, but make it into a training session. So we ask for a sit, we ask for a stay, then we hold that click. Just like with regular clicker training, that clicker not only marks the behavior we're looking for, but it ends it. So if we want a longer duration, we'll hold that click for a little bit longer. Build on that, build a little momentum in the session where you're asking for a five second sit, a 10 second sit, a 15 second sit. Then start by putting a boot on. If your puppy moves, ah, 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 sit, work through that. It's just like getting a puppy to sit until you can set their bowl of food completely on the ground. Mm -hmm. It happens in stages. And you're going to work through that the same way when you're getting ready to go out the door. And eventually, through conditioning, and like Ethan said, this hasn't been a problem for a short amount of time. It's been months of an issue. It's going to take time to get there. But your puppy's eight months old mentally mature, is going to be able to focus and think for longer periods of time. And you're going to be able to get there. So don't be discouraged. So the next thing that you touched on there was uh, your dog's opening doors. Now, my question for that is in regards to... I was going to say, I need a lot more information about this process. Yeah. And um, like we talked about at the beginning of this, uh, we do have a Patreon community page where it's set up to help people like yourself on your specific questions and some of that backing and forthing can't be done in the simple answer of a yes or no 
to these things. But I'm guessing that it involves like uh, the only time I've seen dogs be able to open doors, it involves those paddle flip type. Yeah, the flip down lever lever style. Or I have seen dogs be able to open sliding doors where they can get their little paws hooked around the edge and pull. pull. Mm. So we have a couple different situations, but it sounds like your dog's pretty intelligent um, if it can figure these things out, which isn't always a wonderful thing. Some dogs are almost too smart for their own good, and then it gets them into trouble, which it sounds like is happening with our springy little Labrador puppy right now. Mm -hmm. But that also means they're fully capable of learning the good behaviors that we want them to exhibit as well. The last little caveat, I mean, kind of ties the first question in with this question and um, our, you know, power of place training, if you will. Um, the place board would be another way to really help in the early stages of this sit stay behavior. Um, you know, you can stay on on utilizing a actual place is going to make that process easier for the dog to distinguish the fact that they have now left said place they were supposed to stay. So, you know, being able to utilize that as that baby step, if you would, to, um, to be able to eventually sit and stay and behave. It's a, it's a really good thing to incorporate. Yeah. Because those platform style beds, dog beds, or even like the climb sand, it creates a very distinct boundary that the dogs have to make the conscious choice of getting off of and incorporating kind of double whammy obedience of place training and sitting and staying on that place. And then being able to create a little bit of distance between you and that spot typically will allow the excitement not to reach out and touch that puppy because, you know, you're right next to them when you're putting on boots, they're right next to you and then they get all worked up and they want to jump. Well, if you're three or four feet away, that excitement isn't going to maybe jump. I think it's uh, that barrier. And I, you know, I don't necessarily know if he heard it from someplace else or it was his own thought, but Bob, uh, which is a good friend of ours and another dog trainer, he has a YouTube channel. You should check it out as well, especially in the Labrador based things. I mean, that's his specialty. Um, but he used the exact phrase, I believe it was him, uh, distance erodes. Control. Uh, control. So the, f- as well as um, distance eliminates or minimize something distraction. It's, it's also, it's distraction and control both of them. So the farther you are away from the dog, the less control you have over them. But the farther the dog is away from the excited situation, the less of a distraction it is. So it's a, it's a fine line there. Kind of a to- double edged sword. Yes, it is, but it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a balancing act that you should try and experiment a little bit with your dog. You know, putting a little more distance when you're working on these things may help your situation, but if you put too much distance, you're going to end up in a situation where it's like, man, that didn't work at all. So yeah, and you mentioned Bob, but you didn't mention his channel so that they know it's Lone, Lone Duck, duck yep. folks. Lone Duck. All right, so some of you uh, are very interested, like we've heard on it multiple occasions, I'm just here for the bourbon. <laughs> um, I put an ice cube in my bourbon, okay? Uh, it's not a normal thing that I do, and I instantly regretted the first sip that I took of the ice cubed bourbon after the fact. So I'm a neat guy. Um, sometimes if the bourbon's a little hotter, cool it down a little bit, but for me, a splash of warm like I was, room I was temperature say, water is better. A little hot, not necessarily temperature wise, and no, no, cooling no, no. it down, yeah, not yeah. necessarily temperature talking. wise with a nice cube. Yeah, we're talking proof here. But um, but for me, uh, sipping cold bourbon is not what I'm used to or what I care for. So uh, after this is gone, we go we go back to the the room temperature stuff. <laughs> but it's all a personal preference, you know. It's uh, I learned in a. Uh, actually for my brother, he took a whiskey tasting glass and the guy said, he said, after he took the whole class, it came down to it. He said, essentially drink it however you want. It doesn't really matter. (laughs) Well, well, thanks for the lesson on ice cubes. Now, you know, so I'm glad we were able to at least start answering your question. Lola, the silver Labrador. If you have more questions and you need a little more advice, that's where we recommend reaching out to Patreon. Uh, And that is, Definitely something that you do have to pay for. So with the, you know, kind of snappy comment back on this, um, we do promote that, but we do put a lot of free content out there as well. And we try and have a balance. So moving on, 
to our next question. Dun, dun, dun. What do we got, babe? John Garner. Mm-hmm. Yawa question, which makes these so much easier to find. If you didn't know, we pull all of the comments or all of the questions for our Yawa from the YouTube comments, and they're easy to find when people put that in the comment. I have used your videos to start my new puppy on her training, and they have been a great resource. Well, you're welcome. That's awesome. That's what they're there for. But I have a 10-week-old chocolate lab, and when I try to train her to retrieve in the yard, she will either go and sniff the toy or pick it up and run away. She used to bring it right back, Mm. but now she wants to keep it for herself. Do you have any suggestions to correct this behavior? So my guess, you want me to write it down on a piece of paper? Give me a piece of paper. I'll write my guess down. And then I want you to write your guess down. Like as a, a straight from the top. Number one reason that I feel like this is the situation. And I want to know what your no, no number peaking. one situation. No peeking. Okay. So uh, let's exchange papers. This is like when you were in elementary school and you corrected the paper of the person ahead of you. That's probably against privacy yeah, 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 acts yeah, yeah. and things now, but <laughs> Ethan's getting a zero on this assignment. Oh, goodness. We had different answers. We did. But they are related at the same time. So different they verbiage, are. same answer, I guess. It's similar. I think that I want to know what you're explaining and then I'll explain what I'm explaining, but I think it's similar. So basically, Kat said boredom. And Ethan said overdid the training. Yep, which ultimately caused the boredom. So same, 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 but different verbiage. Dang, we're good. Yeah, so really what it comes down to and what it sounds like is if before your puppy was excited about retrieving and playing the retrieving because we do have multiple ends of the spectrum. If you have a dog that's currently struggling and cares, could give two insert beeps now um, about retrieving, you know, it's something where you got to develop it and we've got to build drive and desire and then eventually it clicks or it doesn't click or we have to do more work or something, something. But if you've got a dog that likes to retrieve and likes to play, you've got to keep them in that zone of wanting more. And I think that that's true for all of us, okay? It's, uh, if you find something that you like and you overdo it, it sushi. falls. <laughs> it's, the, it's true. I love sushi, but if I eat too much of it too often, I'm like, mm, I don't feel like sushi today. Yeah, and, and I don't think that there's anybody here that could argue uh, there is something or all things, even no matter how much you like it. If you overdo it, you'll get to the point where it's like either you're sick of it or... Binging Netflix. I mean, you can only binge so many episodes of Netflix. Yeah, anything. All the things. So many examples. I just can keep coming up with more. Sorry. Eating steak. Steak is like one of my favorite things. Um, and even the next, I absolutely love prime rib. Absolutely love it. Um, but when I go guide in South Dakota, unfortunately those poor guys up there have to eat prime rib and I get to eat it every third day, essentially for a month. And that is a lot of prime rib. And when I come home, we, uh, you know, we've, uh, it's kind of been a tradition. It's a Thanksgiving thing here in our family. And then also a Christmas thing sometimes. And it's like by the Christmas, I'm ready to wait until next October to eat prime rib again. Which you know, is why like, we had lasagna for Christmas this year. We actually. did. We <laughs> ate lasagna for Christmas. So Ethan's like, I can't eat any no more No more rib. beef. Thank you. And that's a weird thing coming from me. I like to eat beef. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a big part of it. But you overdo anything and you are going to run into that situation where it's just like, man, don't want that anymore right now. So I think that's probably what you've come down to is a little bit of boredom and or overtraining, which has caused a lack of desire to continue on in that task. And um, I would say that your best bet for fixing the problem is to take a break from retrieving. Now in this, this is going to sound really mean, okay? Um, but the dog deserves 16 lashes for its, but no, I'm just joking. Um, you take Jeez. <laughs> with a cat nine. Okay. Um, 
we take all of the fun retrieving type toys away for a little while. Anything that the puppy likes to run and grab Pick and up, run around with around. and lay down and chew on, any of those things, uh, we kind of need Take to eliminate away. for a while. Mm -hmm. Now, they can have some chew bones that they're yep. laying on their dog bed, having a chew bone, a chew treat. But a any of quality those antler chew. Uh, we have, for our dogs, the antler chew splits. So the bones, the antlers actually cut in half already for you. So you kind of get access to that internal marrow-ish cavity. And then uh, pork chops, they make those non-rawhide chews. Those are also, there's a lot of variety in that that are really good. And then um, even, I'm not too opposed with, excuse me, uh, rope toys. As long as they aren't like grabbing the rope toy and flipping it in the air and throwing it around. But most dogs like to chew on those pretty good too, I think. So... But if you take away all of the retrieving based toys, bumpers, definitely balls, stuffed, uh, animals. stuffed toys, yeah. things like that, that are going to carry over to those retrieving type behaviors, then when it's time, again, you've taken your break for that retrieving session, they are excited for what we have to offer. And then you move into basically less is more. And we say that fairly regularly in training situations, less is going to be more. And that overdoing or boredom aspect of things is a real problem. It's a real situation and it's different for every dog. So there is no magic number. And a lot of people want the specifics they want. And the hard part about the dog training in general is it is not black and white in most of it. I use the term and have been criticized a little bit for it about making situations in advanced work black and white, even though dog training as a whole is not black and white. I mean, there's a whole, I mean, it's just one giant gray spectrum. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about in another, about the black and white stuff with advanced training. If somebody has questions about advanced training, we'll bring that up. But in this situation though, it's, uh, well, dog over here, Sparky, Sparky can do three to five retrieves. Well, uh, smoke, or let's use the thunder. Okay. Thunder can retrieve until he falls over essentially. Right. But still we keep him in that category of wanting, wanting more. more. We don't go, well, let's just throw. And I personally have made these mistakes. I mean, I, we had a dog, crazy Sam. We've talked about lots of times, but I used to throw, and this is me being stupid. Okay. I'm saying dumb, dumb. I could have seriously screwed her up. Um, physically health wise and then retrieving wise and all the things I would play fetch with her till she couldn't like run anymore. She's panting so hard. She'd come over and just lay down under the garden hose and we would cool her off and then play with her again. Um, I mean, there's a and small we were part making of mistakes because we're like, she loves this. She absolutely yeah, let's loves just it. Do it until she can't do it anymore. And, and she was known as crazy Sammy. So we're like, let's tire this little girl out a little it bit. It was a constant attempt at, um, killing her well, on a regular basis. <laughs> no, a constant to attempt the, to wear her out enough to be to a little more out. livable, yes. Yes. more livability. Always. <laughs> yeah. Always. So I'm, um, We've been there, made these mistakes, and it's a situation where if you take that step back, take all the toys away for a little bit, and then, and, and a little bit is different for every dog too, but I'm going to say a period of about two weeks. One to two weeks, you're going to see a little bit stir crazyishness. You might see some increase, like I want to go get shoes now, or I want to take this, or I'm trying to find something to carry around, and that's your sign that says, all right, you're ready to go back and play this game, but we're going to do it on my terms, which is going to be one retrieve or two retrieves and then you're still excited and ready and you brought it right back to me and you're focused Poof, session ends and then we can build off of that yeah and we're going to end that session with excitement we're going to be like teasing oh you want another one you want another one i bet you do you're going to want it again the next time we bring this bumper out Gone. yep and it also sounds like there's a little bit of maybe your puppy trying to run off with the object too so clipping them up to a check cord so you have a little more control over that situation mm -hmm. is a good idea. We show that in a couple of our other YouTube videos, how to do that with retrieving with young puppies, just so you have a little more control over the situation. Um, but I know a lot of people overdo retrieving specifically, but all 
things can be overdone. You can overdo obedience training with young dogs too much. And then they don't have enough independence when it comes time to actually get in the field and start training and hunting. Um, and I think it boils down to people love their puppies. People want to do all the things with their puppies. They watch our videos and they're like, I need to do this training session every day, twice a day for the next two weeks. Then I'm going to do the next drill every day, twice a day for the next two weeks. And people always ask us, well, how often are you training? How many training sessions till you move to the next thing? And yeah, it definitely depends on the dog. Like Ethan was saying, um, there's no cookie cutter method that works for every single dog. We have to think of ourselves more as teachers with a curriculum, but we sometimes have to modify our lessons plans depending on what the dog that we're working with needs. Mm -hmm. And what happens is people want to do all the things with their dogs, but they don't just take a breath and say, let's just be a puppy for a little bit. Let's just go for a free run. It's still training. It's still good socialization. It's still things that that puppy needs to be exposed to, but it's not necessarily a specific structured retrieving training session or a specifically structured obedience clicker training session. So there is part of it to let your dog be a dog and not just hammer the training sessions day after day. That will eventually wear any dog out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think we had a really good gamut of questions. Absolutely, we did. Mm -hmm. and we I got all of those yeah. from YouTube. YouTube. YouTube comments. That's where we get all our questions from. Yes, we did. And I'm not out of tea, but we are out of time. I'm not out of bourbon, but I'm going to sit here and enjoy it by myself. So until next time, folks, I'm the guy with the pink gun. And I'm Cat the dog trainer. Goodbye. Ha <laughs> ha.